Good morning, gang. Happy Friday. Yay. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to be a nice weekend for everybody. I guess I'm going to have like 70 degrees and nice comfortable day. Give me a chance to get out and get a lot more work done in the yard. So that's my plan. But yesterday I talked about the economic disaster that's brewing, and I kind of wanted to elaborate a little bit on it uh, and give you all an idea where we can be heading with this. So let's start to go, go back with what I said the other day about what the key word is in build back better. It's back, okay? In other words, how the current administration wants to fundamentally change the American way of life. Now, we've talked many times about the desire for the elites for a feudal society, uh, you know, and that's obviously a goal. As, as we can all agree, they're making a concerted effort to completely destroy the middle class. Okay. Can't, can't pick up, you know, well, let's say pick up a newspaper, but who the hell reads a newspaper anymore? But, you know, can't look at an online article where it's not saying the middle class is shrinking anywhere, you know, even out of the, the crap that we get out of the mainstream media, okay? But remember, feudalism is a two-class society, okay? Basically rich and poor. So, you know, if you put that into 21st century terminology, the elites and the welfare class, and as much as some people like to think they're elite, okay, I hate to break it to you, but we're all going into the welfare class, I don't care if you're a lawyer, I don't care if you're a doctor, I don't care if you're a Hollywood celebrity, I don't care if you're Joe Wrench Turner or Mary Office Worker, we're all expendable to the elites, okay? We're just warm bodies whose sole purpose on earth in their mind is to serve them, okay? Now, remember, the political elite, you know, the the ones that are there, the, the Bidens, the Harrises, the Merkels, the Morrisons, the Johnsons, the, you know, pick one, Trudeau, whatever, okay. They're on a desperate mission to completely crush capitalism, freedom, and independence and replace it with socialism, martial law, and complete and total government control of everything, right? Believe it or not, this exact scenario has happened before. Maybe you heard of it. It was the French monarchy in the 18th century. Okay. If you compare history, you can look back at the 18th century French population uh, as they became disillusioned with the monarchy. And, you know, you go back to Louis XV. Okay. He was a highly unpopular king for his sexual excesses, his overall weaknesses for losing Canada to the British. Okay. Go back in U.S. history. Let's compare that to Barack Obama. Now, while there weren't any sexual excesses, unless, of course, Bathhouse Barry counts, okay, overall weakness was well documented. Don't forget, lead from behind, okay? You know, and then if you want to talk about, you know, comparison to losing Canada to the, uh, to the British by Louis XV, look at how Obama weakened the United States and diminished our status as a world superpower, okay? We had the weakest military since World War I under Obama. But back to history, okay? So after Louis XV died, his grandson became king. And obviously he was Louis XVI, okay? And he was an even weaker leader. Now, remember, Louis XVI was the guy that was married to Marie Antoinette, okay? So this couple put themselves above all the people, even though they had no concept of reality, either economically or socially. Sound familiar? I bet you could name a current leader who fits that mold. Let's go, Brandon. Okay. So what was the result? Well, the French Revolution arose from the failure of Louis XVI's re regime. You know, he couldn't manage the economic crisis. He couldn't manage the uh, the social crisis that we have. You had rapid population growth. You had the inability to uh, adequately finance government debt, uh, you know, which resulted in an economic depression, unemployment, and high food prices. You know, then add to that, they had a regressive tax system uh, and resistance to reform by the elites. 
you know, and that all resulted in the collapse of the French monarchy. Okay, that was it. Louis the Sixteenth was the end. Now, let's think about this. Failure to manage social and economic inequality. Check. Rapid population growth, i.e. the southern invasion. Check. Inability to finance government debt. Check. Unemployment. Check. High food prices. Check. A regressive tax system. Inflation. Check. Resistance to reform by the elite class. Check. Result. Collapse of the French monarchy or American democracy. Check. So what's going to happen? Okay. I think we can all agree that if we continue the path that we are on with government as it's running right now, the 2022 midterms are going to be a bloodbath for Biden okay, and for the entire Democrat Party. You, know, you can't make up a 36% approval rating, even with creative accounting. So what's the alternative? Could it be canceling the elections? Yeah, and that's possible. How? It's actually pretty simple, guys, okay? The building blocks are already being put in place in plain sight for everyone to see, at least those who don't have rose-colored glasses on, okay? Food shortages, the same thing that led to the French Revolution. Now, if you go back 15 years before the French Revolution, the first uprising they had was called the Flower War in 1775. And that led to a series of riots that took place in northern, eastern, and western France. Okay? This is where the infamous quote that was probably falsely attributed to Marie Antoinette gains notoriety. You know, you know this one. Let them eat cake. Okay. You see, if food suddenly becomes scarce which in some places it is, okay? A lot of you guys have said it is. Some have said it isn't, but okay. But if suddenly everywhere, food is coming scarce. Or if food becomes prohibitively expensive, which it is getting everywhere, okay? Eventually the people revolt. How? Well, first crime goes up. As people are either stealing food or stealing something as a means to get money for food, okay? Then as the shortages get worse, people eventually start rioting and taking to the streets, maybe looting stores. Think of Minnesota last year. Okay. Then he had the mandates in that are causing people to be fired from jobs. And now they have no income. Food's going up, income's coming down. Okay, Feudalism. Then think about no state or city workers. So let's talk about infrastructure. Okay, because of the mandates. No snowplow drivers. They're city and state employees. Okay, Sorry, you can't get to the store because roads aren't clear. No teachers. No hospital workers, etc., etc., etc. You know, let's keep on going. What happens then? Well, police forces, what's left of them, are overwhelmed because they're so short-staffed from the mandates and also from defund the police efforts. So what does government do? They call in the National Guard. Hmm, haven't heard that idea floated around anywhere lately, have you? Okay. So now when the National Guard's out patrolling the streets, how difficult is it to declare martial law? Not hard at all. Guess what? Effective immediately, we're all under martial law. No elections. Bingo. Mission accomplished. It's that simple, guys. Okay, Riots in the street, you need a national presence. Poof, that's martial law. You know, a lot of you guys say Katrina. Okay, Katrina wasn't officially martial law, but imagine that nationally. Okay. This is almost certainly the plan. We know the Democrats will do anything and everything they can to not relinquish power. Bringing in refu refugees. You know, fast-tracking them to citizenship with all the promise of free stuff. Hey, just vote for us and we'll give you your, your Biden bucks and your house and your car and whatever. Okay, Maybe it's gerrymandering like crazy. <laughs> just look what they tried in Illinois. Okay, Being adamantly against ID. Okay, Unrestricted mail-in voting. I can go on and on and on and on and on. 
you know, to so many different ways of doing things. Okay? Not a big deal. Okay? You see, they can read history too, or at least the parts that they don't try to change or erase, and they know what's coming. Okay, the same thing that happened to Fr happened in France in 1789. They know what the result was too, and trust me, they're not interested in giving up power. They're just interested in seeing the end of democracy. Okay, they want an oligarchy. That's exactly what they want. The masses in the U.S. and the world, majority of people, 97, 98% of the people in all the countries, are going to be in for a huge wake-up call very soon if they haven't realized what's going on yet. Okay, There's going to come a day in the very near future when everything is too expensive to buy because your money's worthless. Food, gas, electricity, wood, clothing, I mean, you name it. That's the goal for Democrats. It's also the goal for rhinos. It's also the goal for some Republicans, okay? There's no politician that's immune to this one. Maybe a constitutionalist, and there ain't a whole lot of those, okay? Politicians all think that they're elite, that the populace is just going to bow to their greatness and feed them grapes while they lay there on silk sheets. They're in for a huge surprise. You know, now... Today, the government is trying to blame hoarders for the food shortages. You know, circle back sakis in there. Oh, people are buying too much stuff. That's why it's not there. Okay. Good. I hope they're right. I hope it is hoarders that are buying everything. I hope people are going to the store and buying tons of food. Not just preppers, but the normies too. Okay. Because remember, he who controls the food controls the future. If we, the people, control our own destiny, the wannabe oligarchs are the actual peasants. Because remember this, they have no skills. Eventually, if we don't need them, they're going to be begging us to take care of them. Food for thought. Happy Friday. Come on out.